Welcome to Aging Gayfully. We're about adventure, leisure, travel, being a citizen of the world, traveling to destinations, and being a part of the global community as we age and prosper in body, mind, and spirit. Welcome to Aging Gayfully. I'm Josh. And I'm Chris. Josh, how's it going? It is going well. Chris, I want to show you on the camera here how I am embracing the gray. You are embracing the gray. I can see it. I can see it coming in because, you know, sometimes you're clean shaven. Sometimes you're one of these guys that can grow a beard within a couple of days. Yes, so. I had dyed my beard. And the, the chemicals had burned my face. And so whilst I had a very lovely brown beard the way it used to be in days of yesteryear, it came with a cost that I wasn't willing to pay. So I shaved all that stuff off. And now I'm just embracing my, my inner Santa, which will be soon my outer Santa. So you've just revealed uh, an inside scoop here that you dyed your beard. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that... I, I never hid the fact that I did that. I was always because I'd show up to work with a different color beard. I mean, it was never, it was never a secret. But it's just one of those things where I decided that's not a thing that I needed to do. I never knew this about you that you colored your beard. I mean, this is a this is breaking news. Uh, it was only within the last year that I colored it. Before I was just letting it go, and I decided, you know, let's. Let's see what it what it looks like if I hearken back to when I was a, a younger man. Well, again, it's it's painful to do that. There's certain things that if you try to do it the way you did as a younger person, it's going to pay a consequences. And for me, it was the beard. But then also for me, it was I just tried to walk around Disney World for an entire day with my family. And mm -hmm. I am not a young person anymore. It's not a thing that I can do comfortably. <laughs> the walking was a problem or what, 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 why are you not a young person anymore? That's the, that's the $64,000 question. Well, first of all, it seems that now I, now I develop pain just by sleeping wrong. So that is a thing that's been happening. My neck's all screwed up, my elbow, my knee. And, um, I found that now my left heel starts to ache if I walk too much and I don't understand why. So, yesterday that's what was happening is my my heel was aching and i would stop and then not want to start again i i'm gonna forewarn you as you get older you're gonna you you better be prepared for the dreaded pulled earlobe muscle disease that'll happen <laughs> oh tell me more tell me more oh that's just a, that's a kind of an inside bowling joke i when i when i used to bowl on tour and things weren't going too well. And I wanted to withdraw from the tournament. I would say, Oh, I've got a pulled earlobe muscle and it's just the, it's just impacting my imbalance when I throw the ball. Of course, that was kind of a euphemism for like, God, I'm like really shitty today. I just can't, I can't handle, <laughs> I can't throw another shot and, wa and watch this, watch this disaster unfold in front of me. So, so the inside joke was I've got a pull to your low muscle today. <laughs> so. I must remember that. Well, you actually, you could go to your boss, you could go to your boss at work and say, Oh, you know, I'm going to have to take the day off. I've got to pull your low muscle. <laughs> I'm writing that down. One uh, weird thing that mm -hmm. happened to me, and I don't know if this is something that our listeners can can relate with, but there was a point where there was a ride that the family wanted to go on where people would get wet, and I didn't want to get wet, and we were carrying a backpack with all of our shit in it that I did not want to get wet. So I sat down at the exit of that ride waiting for them to waiting for them to, to do the ride and finish. Well, as you may know, the, the lines at Disney are like 45 minutes long. So if you sit down, you are sitting down. And I was very happy to do so. I took off my shoes and I set them to the side and I was just there happy as Larry. When they were finally done with the ride, let's say that it was an hour later, they, they come back. And I went to go put on my shoes and walk around. My feet hurt more. Like, I think my feet thought, okay, we are mm -hmm. done for the day. 
And so we're going to we're going to get in that mode where we're not going to be used for the next 12 hours. And they were mm -hmm. they were, you know, sadly mistaken. So when I went to go put my shoes on and walk around my feet, I felt like I was a 107 year old arthritic gentleman. It was the weirdest thing. And then I walked that off and it was fine. But I was like, what the hell is going on now? Old age and decrepitude is just... Uh, yes, that's right. That's, that's right. Well, you just kind of live in the moment. Kind of how I think we age gayfully is by living in the moment and dealing with whatever, whatever calamities. Uh, yes, definitely. Well, you know one thing I, I was really enjoying? And I mean this in the most wholesome way possible, not in, in a bad way. I just really love to sit there and people watch. Now... Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe in, in times past, I would people watch and, and, you know, make fun of people or what, what's that crazy thing that they were dressed in or whatever. Well, first of all, this was a Halloween party, so everyone was dressed crazy. But second of all, Everybody. I just was able to sit and enjoy the mass of humanity um, that was going by me like a, like a river and really reflecting on how uh, as different as we all are, we're all basically the same. We all want the same things. And it's, it's very nice when I get to just sit and contemplate my little tiny place in this large mass of humanity, but yet how we're all still interconnected. I'm going very philosophical, and I was not on mushrooms yes. there in Disney World. <laughs> so it was it was actually very enjoyable. You know, I like to say that we are all leaves on the same tree. You know, we all have our distinctive things about us, but then we're all interconnected, and we would be smart to to contemplate that every now and again to kind of ground us in, in reality. So we don't get a little bit too big for our britches. Well, I think there's, and I would agree where there's more similarities than there are differences. It's just taking the time to find out what those similarities are. And you know, you know, the other, the other great place to people watch is airports. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But people get real, you know, something about themselves in airports. That's the one thing. Like I'm I get really stressed until I get through security because the security situation, I think that they intentionally want to keep you tense and on your toes and all that stuff. Um, and I try my hardest to get through security without being right. a total asshole. But then sitting and waiting for the flight, because we usually get really, really um early. We usually get there is I love to just watch people and their little peculiarities as, you know, how they travel. And let me ask you a question. Do you dress up to travel or you do you dress for comfort when you travel? Not anymore. Used to. As a kid, used to get all dressed up, but not anymore. When did you stop getting dressed up for, for travel, for especially uh, plane travel? I don't know. I'd have to think about that. But... Um... It's been a while, even in traveling for business, which I haven't done in a long time. But I, I you know, it's very casual because it's you want to sit in that seat and be comfortable. You don't want to, you don't want a coat and a tie. And you know, sometimes you you end up in that attire because of time constraints. But if I'm leaving from my house. I'm not. I'm. I'm going casual. See, I would tend to be that way, but I, I listen to a lot of folks because I have a bunch of podcasts in my ears. And there's this one gentleman called George Hahn who is kind of into sartorial style, and he argues that you dress, you dress up, right? Don't dress down. You dress up, and you also, when you do that, you carry that that attitude with you both reflected in how people treat you, but also reflected in how you feel about yourself and how you carry yourself. And of course, this, this guy, he's in his fifties. So he's, he's a younger guy and he's still in the workplace mm -hmm. and he takes that consideration with him. But I often think, you know, I wonder if I should, if I should dress more up for, for occasion than I do. Cause I don't. I mean, I listen uh, right now. I've got this collared Hawaiian shirt on. For me, this is a, a tuxedo. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't. Even when I go to work, I try to get out of wearing a tie if I can help it. But yeah. I mean, there is something to I think how you dress and how your outward appearance is, and then how you project your the rest of yourself into the world. Don't you think? 
I you know I agree with that that uh, attire does um, lend to both uh, personal confidence. Uh, it also lends to how people perceive you. Uh, but I think, at least for me, uh, in the midst of wearing bow ties for God knows how long, you could. I, I think as you as you get older, you kind of get tired of it. Sure. How I'd like to get dressed up now, and if I ever make it to to England or Scotland again, I'm going to get a kilt. Well, that's comfortable. That'll be that'll be my dress up outfit. Right. As they say, at the end of the day, it's all drag. You know, it's all <laughs> you are choosing how to present yourself. Can we do drag in Florida? I don't, is that okay? Uh, there there well, are people here in town who I, seem I, to think that it's still okay. We certainly have a, oh, a it's a good thing. A, a drag luncheon that that is very enjoyable here in town. So that's a thing that still happens. Um. Well, you, you, you're, it's funny that you're talking. We're talking about drag and dress up, and I, 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 I this 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 week I I had a, a commercial shoot in Miami, and as I was getting ready for the commercial shoot, I'm thinking, now wait a minute, when was the last time I had long pants on? Uh, well, and I, I I I've had long pants on twice this year. It was both for commercial shots. <laughs> Other than going to St. Louis for my sister's funeral, I, it's like long pants, shoes. I mean, I can't wear sandals. What the <laughs> life you live! So yeah, so you are, you're a celebrity here. You've got video commercial shots and all this and that, and this is all stuff that I'm quite certain you did not imagine you would be doing when you were in your you know former career, your former life. How amazing is that? No, it was far from. It was far from um, any thought process, and I think it's evolved from being involved with podcasting and and doing uh, presentations that, like I've done over the last 10, 15 years where I've just kind of fell into this um, opportunity to use my voice, to use the uh, <laughs> the the natural gray beard and mustache as a as a marketing ploy but it, it it also is another example of stepping into your comfort zone i really i really love doing this again it's a it's about following your dreams and doing the things that you enjoy doing and and not holding back and if you can dream it you can do it i'm just digging this these commercials and these voiceovers and even the auditions are fun. Now, do you, you send in an audition? Well, I could say tape. It's not tape anymore, but you send, you have a, a reel, I guess, like a, like a reel that you can send in to people say, Hey, this is me. Audio and uh, audio and, and visual, but it's all, and it's all digital obviously, but uh, some, um, some folks ask for an audio reel. Some ask for a video. So, and the way that uh, the way that I've learned this, especially over the last six months, is any time that you do an audition, well, that's another that's another piece of content for uh, for brands to find you. So this past week, three new three new brands reached out, and it's all because of the content that I've. Uh, that I've added to the portfolio. And so I, I really don't pass up an opportunity to do another, to do any type of voiceover demo because it's another example of your talents and skills. You did, what did you just do? Like, what was the, was it a, a one minute spot? What did you just do, this thing in Miami? Oh, uh, this past week it was a, um, was a spot for sleep apnea. Okay. But it was close to a 12, 12, uh, 12,000 words. So it was a narrative that was in sections. And uh, probably it took uh, a couple of hours to get uh, to complete it. 
And then this, uh, the other thing that went on this week was um, uh, a beard oil uh, gig. And there was a variety of um, uh, a variety of content that had to be created. And I think if you've been on Instagram or, or Facebook and you see these uh, uh, user user what's the user created UCC user created content that's kind of where marketing is going these days where where core organizations or brands are reaching out to users who are content creators to promote their work and it uh, promote their brand i spoke to an organization this week that was interested in in hiring and i just said I, I just need to know that you've got uh, that you're collaborating with companies that are interested in working with a, a senior actor because I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste our time. And they assured me that they did. So, and I, I never would have thought of something like this happening, but now that it's happened, it's like I, I can see doing this the rest of my life. Well, as long as somebody is will, will hire you, why not? Yeah. Have you ever come across your ads in the wild? Like you're you're going through the internet or whatever, and then boom, your face comes up unexpectedly. Or- I have not, but I did have some uh, a friend of mine in Massachusetts say, uh, "Did you? I, I I saw an insurance ad." And sure look like you. And I said, well, that's probably something that I did a couple of couple of weeks ago. So I haven't, I, you know, I, I keep waiting for something on YouTube or uh, um, cable to pop up. And it's like, no, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I can only, I can only go by what people tell me and while I, I kind of relate this experience to my bowling experience. I was confident as a bowler because I, mm-hmm. I knew what my talents and skills were. I didn't need anybody to tell me. In this arena, I've been told numerous things about my voice and my look and how that plays into why people want to hire me. And I'm now, the, the difference is I'm starting to believe it. Yeah. Because I'm I'm starting to get paid. I'm starting to get paid for for gigs that um, can lead to bigger and bigger opportunities, which I'm going for. No, I love that, and you absolutely have a a wonderful voice. I mean, surely you already knew that. I didn't. I didn't. So, uh, but now since it's been expressed to me by so many people that people that I know and don't know then okay, well go for it. I think that's kind of why we do the, enjoy doing the podcast because, um, I don't know. I I, I don't mind. I certainly enjoy talking, but uh, you get positive feedback for these episodes and all the episodes that goodness, I'm probably over 500 episodes of podcast in my career. So I wonder how many I've done. I I think I'm probably around 300 or so. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you know, you're, you'll catch up. <laughs> well, I don't want to catch up because that means you will have stopped, and we don't want that. I don't know if I'll ever stop. We'll always be an aging gay fully podcast. For those seniors who are out there who are really looking for a second act or a third act, even, you know, they find themselves retired with all this time. Where, how, what direction would you point them to try to find that that thing? I make it real simple. Just go into that wish list that you've always had. Well, I wish I could have done this. I wish I could have went there. I wish I could have. Well, you know what? Make those wishes come true. Well, yeah, after you're just going to Disney. So it's like that, that's a perfect, uh, let's see. Make those wishes come. But no, really. What have you wanted to do in your life now that you have the time to do it? Like my friend uh, down in Fort Lauderdale, he 90 years old, he'd never been to Disney World or Epcot. That's what he wanted to do on his 90th birthday. That was on his bucket list. His next bucket list, he's going, he wants to go to Taiwan again. By the time he gets to Taiwan, he'll be closer to 91 than the 90. But don't shut yourself down. 
do what you feel like you're capable of doing, but stretch yourself to do things to see what you can do. One of the items on my list is gardening. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm going to do a garden in a, in a, in a condo, but you know, I've got 10 orchids going on and some plants on the patio. It's like, you know what? I kind of dig in this. No, no pun, pun intended. intended. <laughs> uh, that just came right off the top of my bald head too. So that was an unplanned pun. Hey, we did not write that. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we did, we'd be writing really cool shit. <laughs> so I would have to say that as, as I age, the one thing that I'm recognizing that's so important in being happy and, and really finding that thing is making sure that I maintain and build connections with other people. I see way too many seniors isolate for any number of reasons. And the ones that I see that are successful and still growing and still learning and still doing things are ones that are human beings, really, that just keep themselves open to making new relationships and continuing to be curious about other people. I often say that the most important thing that we have about our reality, about our existence, is the deep connection that we make with other people. And I say that as long as you're doing that, mm -hmm. you can you can live your dreams. You can do those things that you wanted to do because we all need someone and we all need people. Definitely. To help satisfy, you know, our three basic needs, love, care, and commitment. But we're both a little froggy today. Uh, maybe all those hurricanes that keep passing us by. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's how I'm going to live my <laughs> dreams. No more hurricanes, mm. dude. My goodness. Unbelievable with these hurricanes. Yeah, I missed an opportunity to come to Gainesville because of the hurricanes. Yes, you did. Um, these hurricanes go from zero to 260 in 30 seconds, it seems. So uh, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am so happy that, that my friend Chris is going to be a celebrity, and then and then he's going to hire me as his cabana boy. So I, my future is set now that I got someone to hang my... Oh, yeah, but, you know, I have rules for cabana boys. They can't dye their hair or beard. That's done, and I'll wear the short shorts. I don't care. I'll do the things. <laughs> I've already talked to my wife, Amanda. She's okay, as long as, you know, we bring in the... Bring in the cashola. Well... Oh, there you go. So I'm set for life now. Well, you know, let's, uh, let's make it happen. So speaking of making it happen, how can people connect with us, Chris? How can people get to know us better? Easy. It's a yes, I am at aginggayfully.com. Yes, I am at aginggayfully.com. And we've had some inquiries about um, guests coming onto the show. So, uh, yeah, send us uh, send us your inquiries. Um, you know, we're looking for, we're looking for people that... Um, Want to tell us how they're aging gayfully? Absolutely. I would love that. Let's yeah. do that. Let's do more connecting with other people. Sounds like a plan. All right, folks. So until we talk to you next time, y'all go out there and you age gayfully. <laughs> <laughs>